Hi there. Long time no see. And welcome if you're brand new to Affinity Designer. This video is perfect for beginners. Whether it's your first time opening the program. Or you're just curious to try something new. If you stay with me until the end, I'm sure you'll come away with something useful. My concept for this series is, I know, you know. It's kind of long, I know, but stick with it, it's worth it. Let's start with the pencil tool, I use this one a lot. Personally, I prefer it over the pen tool. But if you're not using a drawing tablet, the pen tool works better. To get started, set your stroke width in the stroke panel. And adjust the stabilizer in the context toolbar at the top for smoother lines. Hold down control when you want to move node points. It helps you avoid switching back and forth between the pencil tool and the node tool. The basic idea is just like other drawing apps. Draw your lines so they touch or overlap. And you can clean them up later using the Shape Builder tool. Now for strokes with pressure, like this bare arm. Go to the stroke panel and tweak the pressure curve. Click to add points along the curve. Drag to adjust width or delete points if you need to. If you want to adjust just the start or end of a stroke, hold down ALT while dragging a point. You can save your custom pressure as a profile to use again later. If you don't like how it turned out, just hit reset. Once you apply pressure to a stroke, it stays that way even on strokes you make with the pen tool, until you change it again. So it's a good habit to save your favorite pressure profiles. If you want your pencil to respond to your hand pressure as you draw, go to the context toolbar and set the controller to pressure. Take your time and draw patiently, no rush. A quick note about color. Stroke and fill are separate, so make sure to turn on or off the ones you need. Sometimes you'll use both, but in this case, we'll add color later using Pixel Persona. Because our ink lines are vector, they'll stay crisp when scaled. Our base colors don't have much detail yet, so scaling won't be a problem. Now, let's say you forgot to save a style or stroke width. Just copy the stroke curve, then go to the edit menu and use paste style. That'll save you time. If your lines are overlapping like this, select them all and use the shape builder tool to erase the extra parts. This no shape isn't quite right. Let's fix it using the Sculpt tool on the Context toolbar. Just remember, start and end your adjustments on the path itself. I've said before that if you want to truly understand the tools, you should start by finding a cartoon character image and try to replicate it as closely as possible you'll gain a much better understanding that way. Following my approach can also help speed up your workflow. Just make sure to stay within fair use guidelines. I think most of us start learning to draw by following others and then gradually develop our own style. Understanding a bit of drawing theory along the way can really help you work more efficiently and with better results. That's exactly how I've been doing it too. Look at the bear's neck here, there's a gap. Use the node tool to add a point, 
Then hold Ctrl and click between the two points to erase it. OK. I think it's good. Let's change all black strokes to brown. Select one black line. Go to Select Menu Select Same Stroke Color, then change the color. When I pick colors, I prefer using the picker in the color panel. Click and drag to the color you want. I find it faster than using the color picker tool. Do the same for fills using Select Same Fill Color. Alright, time to color. Before that, select everything and group it. Then switch to Pixel Persona. Create a new pixel layer. And move it on top of the ink layer. Use the Flood Fill tool. Set the source to Current Layer and Below. It's similar to using a reference layer. From there, feel free to break your design into layers. Maybe one for the head, one for the body. Or separate them by color. Totally up to you. Add as many details as you like. You can add details, shadows, and highlights using the clipping mask method by creating either vector objects or a new pixel layer, and then inserting it into any object. It works just like in most drawing apps, a common technique we often use. On my channel, there are many videos you can check out. Even if they're not labeled specifically for beginners, you can still dive into the details, it's not too hard to follow. Most of my work is done in vector, which gives better quality. One great thing about Affinity Designer is that it's quite similar to Illustrator. Maybe it doesn't have every tool, but it's close enough to get the job done. Some people ask me why certain tools are missing. But honestly, how often do we really use those tools? How much value do we actually get from them? In art, the most important things are the overall composition, a strong design, and unique use of color, not just the tools a program offers. I'm not saying that Affinity Designer is better than other programs, there's still a lot that needs to be improved. But one thing that's clear is it can save you quite a bit of money. I've noticed that long, detailed videos like this are becoming rarer. Most people lean toward fast, bite-sized content. And yes, AI art tools help speed up the process a lot these days. I'm not against AI. It's evolving fast. And there are plenty of tools to make our workflow smoother. Affinity Designer wasn't originally built for illustration. But we can still get a lot out of it. And that's it for this video. If you love drawing, don't forget to subscribe. So you won't miss the next ones. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.